Okay, can everybody take a seat, please? And can everybody, may I have everyone's attention? Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to um, just have a time. We have this being recorded um, and broadcast, podcast to Chicago, I understand? Anywhere. Anywhere, okay. All right. Chicago and places unknown. So anyway, uh, for the next approximately till about 7.30, um, I just want to open up for discussion, questions, answers, discussion, um, interesting research studies anyone has come across or would like to discuss or comment on. Yes. Does anybody know of a holistic dentist that uses ozone? Dr. Gallagher retired recently. Uh, I do think, is Dr. Sandor Heights up in Berkeley? I believe he, he does. Dr. Sandor Heights in Berkeley. Yes, so, somewhat. Also, Dr. Davidoff, his assistant that took over, he uses ozone. So he's following in Gallagher's steps in, in, Gallagher's in his office. office. Okay. Yes. All right. There's also Dr. David Biles. He's in Santa Cruz. Very, very good. B-I-L-E-S. Anybody on the east side of the bay? Dr. Eccles in Livermore does that. Yes, one. Um, any clinic offer uh, infra far infrared uh, sauna detoxification program? Uh, any clinic nearby offer far infrared sauna detoxification program? The question was Does any clinic nearby offer sauna, far infrared, and detoxification programs? It's called Bay Area Health Spa in Mountain View on Grant Road. Any other um, interesting research people have come across recently that they'd like to discuss, comment on, or any other health information that you can share with us? I just wanted to recommend the second edition of The Perfect Health Diet by the Jaminets. Fantastic book, all science-based, evidence-based, and every page has been rewritten, and it's just amazing. Best reference on nutrition I've ever read, so I can really recommend it. It's called The Perfect Health Diet, and the new edition just came out about a month ago, and it's a husband-wife couple called the Jaminets, J-A-M-I-N-E-T-S. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sure I've been seeing a few people who have had, uh, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm a clinician and have been for a long time. Um, <clears throat> I've been, I wanted to come in, I've been seeing a few people who have um, had cancer. I don't, as you know, I cannot legally say I treat cancer, I don't treat cancer, but I assist the person who has the cancer with um, assisting their bodies in their self-healing processes. Anyway, um, I've been doing a lot of reading recently regarding that, and uh, who in here has heard of Dr. Uh, Brzezinski? Probably, yeah, okay, everybody, okay. And a lot of you probably know the story he went through up until just a few, a few years ago regarding his battles with the FDA and they, where they were trying to um, take his patents on the anti-neoplastins. If you, if you haven't, um, go to, uh, you can, online, you can see the movie. It's uh, um, the, the Brzezinski movie, and it's a fascinating story. In fact, they're coming out this year with part two. But Dr. Brzezinski 
is the um, developer, discoverer and developer of anti-neoplastin therapy, which is extremely beneficial for many types of pr um, prior uh, se um, seemingly uncurable cancers. And it's, it's an amazing story. It's the Brzezinski movie. You can see it online, the whole movie. And again, they're coming out this year, sometime this year, with part two. It's an amazing story. So I encourage everyone to see that. So B-U-R-Z-Y in SKI. Yeah, Brzezinski. Did, okay. Yes, yeah. It, it was mentioned Dr. Brzezinski also has come to Cancer Control Convention. Uh, I actually met him back in, when I didn't realize he was going through all the things he was, back in 1996 at an International American Association of Clinical nutritionist uh, uh, continuing education conference I attended and he was in the midst of going through all his battles with the FDA but it's uh, fascinating the the results that they get at the Brzezinski clinic there in um, I don't get any I don't get paid for this it's just it's really fa and it's something everyone should know about if, if you know anyone who has uh, cancer uh, seemingly uncurable cancers. Um, it's it's quite fascinating what they're doing down there. He's now actually doing um, not only SNP testing, single nucleotide polymorphism, but he's actually um, mapping out each individual's uh, genome before treatment. So, in other words, you in you know what will work and what won't work. So it's it's fascinating. What about like pre-cancer, uh, like pre-leukemia conditions? I can't remember the name of that uh, diagnosis, but it's where the white blood cell count goes down and eventually leads to a, a type of leukemia. I don't know if anybody knows the name of it, but I've got a friend that has that. A multiple myeloma type? It's a nerve. Cascara yeah. Sagrada. Something I've all also had some uh, personal, there's a lot of research on this also. I also I've had some uh, personal experience with, with uh, some patients. Uh, there's something called PolyMVA that um, I've uh, been very impressed with the results um, that I've gotten. It's, you can just look, it's PolyMVA. V is in Vic, M. Mary Victor Apple. Poly MVA. You can look at look. It's extremely interesting. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, yeah. But they're they're separate from Poly MVA. Yes. Yes. I just want to let you know, Doctor Teloran. He's this week in the Bay Area again. So in case somebody still wants to see him for skin lesion, it's possible tomorrow. I put flyers there. And on Saturday, we're going to have a really awesome seminar with him on polioanthropology. Just the flyers over there. Have a look. It will be great. Okay, does anybody have any um, particular questions uh, um, that uh, the enlightened uh, um, of all of us here can, uh, that's what this is, a forum that we can uh, discuss? You weren't here last month, but what do you, what's your opinion of the fermented uh, soybeans? Yeah, the ha Haleen. Um, 
I, as far as the fermented soybeans, um, in many cases I have had good results with that as far as uh, being beneficial. Um, they are very, that company, as, as far as I know, uh, they're very um, diligent making sure they're not using GMO soybeans also. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, which uh, our um, second speaker is going to be discussing about regarding GMOs. So. Does anybody know of or have an opinion of, of sour grape juice? I heard it actually helps veins and heart disease, and if, if anybody has an opinion on that, uh, you can find it like in Middle Eastern markets. I, I do not myself, but I'm wondering because maybe because of the polyphenols. Uh, yeah. So, so that, that's what, okay, yeah, because of the grape juice. I just logically, I would think, yeah, probably because of the polyphenols, which and um, so that would, that, that I'm wondering, just thinking about that, about the biochemistry. I'm sorry? There's less sugar in them. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And maybe if they're sour, are they, are they uh, fermented then? They're not fermented. Okay. Probably because of the polyphenol content is one big factor. So, a cardiologist friend of mine, his brother had advanced stage, really advanced stage of uh, arteriosclerosis, and um, he's got a genetic tendency, a high PA1 marker. So he's high, he has a high genetic marker for cardiovascular diseases, and all it is is just when you have um, inflammatory natures like methionine, high methionine, so you get a high homocysteine. But one of the things. Um, this is Rafe's brother, who we, we, we were at the A4M with. He's a cardiologist. He um, started drinking. I to, I've been telling Rafe to do it, but he told his brother to do it. And he had very high inflammatory markers, and he has a PA1 high marker for uh, having a heart attack. And he went on a uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with cayenne pepper, and uh, I told him to put turmeric in there, and honey. Within one month, his uh, panel came back normal, and his marker, PA1, went down to normal. His homocysteine went to normal, and this is, and Rave told me about his brother's story. So just doing that helps immensely. Stick around. I want to ask you a question on that. But you're, you're saying, okay, now turmeric, as you know, is not absorbed that well. But so, what about absorption? I mean, just straight off the shelf turmeric. Uh, turmeric is better absorbed in fat, absolutely. So is curcumin. But turmeric and apple cider vinegar is absorbed even better. Actually, apple cider vinegar. If you ever uh, want to increase your absorption rate on vitamin C or magnesium, calcium, put it in apple cider vinegar. It enhances it. Uh, the cayenne pepper is also an all remedy for inflammatory conditions and helping to, if somebody has a heart attack, we used to put uh, cayenne pepper in their mouth and it increases the, um, the blood flow. It's like a caffeine push and it saved the person's life. And I, it just some, it happened one day. It was uh, it was at a workout facility, and I was running the facility, and and cayenne pepper. I don't know how we got it, but we we went to the uh, I guess to the um, the restaurant that was in that uh, section, and we asked for cayenne pepper, and we threw it in his mouth, and he was able to recover. Probably great vasodilation, also. Yeah, so <laughs> save his life. <laughs> Any other comments? Qu okay. Okay. Question, anybody knows any treatment for Lyme disease? My daughter just came down with it. Comments on treat Lyme disease? Okay. I'm sorry? I got over Lyme disease without any antibiotics. I had had it more than 37 years undiagnosed. 
and it was CDC. It was not just a clinical diagnosis. It was, I was over the top. And there are ways out, but I personally don't believe that you can get better using antibiotics. You can get better temporarily, but it can reoccur in any time whenever your stressors go out. I believe you have to change your body ecology because that's what sets the stage for Lyme to take over. And uh, that's what I do. That's my practice. I work with mold poisoned and Lyme poisoned because it's mostly a neurotoxin thing versus an infection, in my opinion. And then you have, so you have to work on body ecology, and that means working a whole lot on your environment, changing the environment in which you live, and working on EMFs, and um, getting rid of all the toxins in your house, et cetera, et cetera. It's a big job, but I believe it can be done that way. And then it's permanent. I've had no reoccurrence, and it's been seven years now. And um, I can travel. Un unusually, usually, you, people with Lyme who think they've gotten better they go travel and then they, they're hit again, or they go do something extreme, an extreme sport, or they go have a lot of fun, <laughs> they go, and all of a sudden they, they're down in the dumps again. That hasn't happened yet with me, and I don't plan on having it happen. Um, FMBR is going to have a, a clinical trial uh, with regard to Lyme uh, disease, and uh, it's an energy. We're going to experiment with uh, Bill Bingston's uh, technique of energy healing, and he taught a workshop on that. It's a very interesting uh, technique. So if anyone, we're looking for about 10 patients uh, for a pilot uh, project to use this technique, and we'll be using healers throughout the uh, country, uh, about six, seven healers, and giving energy to the 10 persons. So, if anyone knows of uh, people who might be interested in that, uh, please see me. Uh, we're interested and in, we're just starting to recruit with regard to, to this uh, problem. And it's a very difficult problem to, to handle. I, I use energy healing. That's part of it. Multiple yeah. problems attack. You can't just use one method at one time. Are you going to go from one practitioner to the other for 15 years? Yeah. You have to use like six different approaches at the same time and get the bugger, as I call it, out of balance, it, it, so it never knows what's coming at it. Yeah, I believe that also. Um, and, and just an announcement, since I have the microphone, uh, FMBR is uh, giving a, a lecture uh, next Friday, the 25th, um, New Visions of the Afterlife, and by Julia Sante, PhD, and she's one of the experts in that area. So and that's at the Unity uh, uh, Church. Uh, at uh, seven o'clock on, uh, that we have that usually on fourth Fridays of the month. So, but uh, yeah, see me if if you, if you know of anyone who's interested in the line. Yeah, I'll address that as well. Just a quick comment on Lyme is that, you know, as we're hearing, it's and most of us probably know it's a very complex disease process, multifactorial, lots of false positives, false negatives. Um, some of the best, if not the best, Lyme doctors in the country are right here in the Bay Area. Uh, I think there's a Dr. Green, Dr. Lynn up in the city, a naturopath named uh, Misha Greiner. Um, but I would check out a book that just came out, uh, a, a colleague um, called the, the Guidebook to Lyme, or the Lyme Guidebook, uh, by Nicola McFadzen. She's a naturopathic doctor specializing in just Lyme. And it's an outstanding book on why this is so complex. Um, and you know, the politics behind it as well as the, the, the treatment options and diagnosis options and et cetera. She's a real, real brain and it's, it's beautifully written, so I'd highly recommend that. Uh, Nicola McFadzen, The Lyme Guidebook, just came out. Okay, time for either one last question or one last comment. Um, I just wonder if anybody knows how to lower cholesterol. <laughs> that's a um, that's a open question, and I have. Uh, let's see. Did you take? Uh, they're all gone. Okay, they're all gone. Okay, I have a booklet <laughs> discussing a lot of the myths about um, the cholesterol theory of uh, and Dr. Stephen Sinatra 
also has a lot to say about that. The Sinatra Solution, I would encourage you to read that. Um, if one, Just one thing, there was a research study that came out um, about a year and a half ago. It's, it basically said this, that if you, are, if you are over 60 years old and you have a cholesterol of under 189, you have an increased risk of dying with cholesterol under 189. For this study, which I can't re I have the reference in my, who, does anybody have the booklet, uh, the cardiovascular health booklet that, I, that was on the table, that I had a bunch of them there? Somebody must have it because they're gone. Some few people must have it because they're gone. <laughs> There's a, it, it looks, uh, excuse me, it has a cover like this. So, okay, so who else has those? Yeah, there's one, there's a cardiovascular, there's some. So, don't be scared, don't be shy. We're not gonna take them from you. I'm, I'm just asking who, yeah, okay. Some, some people have them because there were a bunch. Is that the cardiovascular one? Okay. All right. You can get this also on, go to my website, Holistic Health Bay Area. Dot com, and you can download this ebook for free, okay? And this goes over um, the many misconceptions regarding the cholesterol theory of heart disease. Very, this is a compilation of research studies, so it's not my opinion. I'm going over what the research says, and a lot of them, especially when you get on ebook, you can uh, click on there and see the full length research studies. HolisticHealthBayArea.com. Dr. Douglas Husbands. Yes. You. Um, if you want to really know about uh, cholesterol, look up UFFE, U F F E, Ravenskov, R A V E N S K O V. He's a Danish researcher, an MD with a PhD degree on cholesterol myths. Actually, what you want to do is lower LDL and triglycerides. And the best way to do that is niacinamide and B5, panthene. That's the two most effective ways to lower H, uh, LDL and triglycerides. Because you need cholesterol. Or you're going to have dementia. Uh, niacinamide, you don't want to take more than 200 milligrams of niacinamide a day. It actually is an elect uh, it helps with the mitochondria electron transport mechanism. And then pantothene is a form of B5. And you can look it up, this immense, enormous research, and everybody should be on it. It actually lowers LDL and triglycerides and keeps HDL up, it raises it. Has nothing to do with cholesterol because you need cholesterol. And if you don't have cholesterol, you're gonna lose um, vitamin D ability and hormone ability and you're gonna lose libido and you're gonna be de dementia. And a matter of fact, since 1980 when I've been doing research on cancer, majority of the 2,000 people I've ever reviewed on cancer, they all had low cholesterol. So it's an indicator of cancer as well, is low cholesterol. Just also, that, that is a very hot topic. In fact, I'm coming out with a paper that's going to be published on that soon also. Um, but uh, the, um, the research studies, uh, the good research studies um, are pointing to, if you're, at, I can only state what the research is showing, but um, if you're over 50 and your cholesterol is lower than between 189 and about 240, you have a problem. I said if it's lower than that. Okay, but anyway, um, but uh, there are many ways. Yeah, again, get my ebook and these other resources are good resources for looking up what the research says. But you, d I definitely agree with 
Dr. Friedlander, um, we, we need cholesterol in certain amounts, and um, the statin drugs doing that, there's many side effects. That's, uh, in fact, I predict that's going to be another, uh, whenever they do a large study on the effects of statins, I predict that uh, you're going to see a backlash uh, to the extent such as the Women's Health Initiative study um, put on regarding the um, primarin and Provera, the synthetic uh, hormone replacement. Uh, I suspect that we're going to see something like that once a large study does come out and you see the re all the real effects of the statin drugs and the side effects. With that, that's an interesting note to take a break on. With that, we're going to take about a 10 minute break and then we're going to have Dr. Trindade um, for her presentation. So let's take uh, 10 minutes so we're not here too late um, because we also have a second speaker. So 10 minute break. So uh, 10 to 8, we're going to start again. <laughs>